Thank you, Samana. Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff from Burbank is here to talk about how politics in Washington is impacting us here in SoCal. Congressman, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you here. Thank you. Um, you know, one of the biggest emerging industries here in SoCal is technology. Facebook, Google, all with big offices here in SoCal now. I know you've spent a lot of time in the last couple of years talking to the executives of those companies. And now the president is saying that those companies are actively changing search results to go against him. Have you seen any evidence of that? Uh, no, of course not. I, I think what happened is the president uh, Googled himself apparently in the middle of the night and was upset that it didn't look like Fox News because that's all that he seems to pay attention to. Uh, but no, I haven't seen any of a political bias uh, in terms of the search engines or the social media companies. Uh, but I'm not surprised that the president doesn't like what they have to say. Uh, any out outlet that isn't uh, anything but fawning over him is the subject of Trumpian ire. Well, one thing he really didn't like is when Michael Cohen uh, ended up pleading guilty and essentially potentially implicating him in a federal crime in terms of campaign finance. How does that change what you do? Because you lead uh, the Democrats in the House Intelligence Committee. If the Democrats win back control of the House, you're going to be in charge of subpoena power. How does what Cohen did change your role going forward? Well, it could change in a couple of ways. Uh, we have reached out to Michael Cohen because there have been suggestions that he has information that would be helpful to share with special counsel, which means also he has potentially information that would be helpful to share with us that he may not have shared with us when he testified originally before he was in a much more cooperative mood. So we'd like to learn more if he has more uh, that is of, of interest and concern of the investigation. But also we need to consider what are the ramifications of the fact that we have now a witness directly saying that the president was engaged in criminal activity with him. And this was no mere bookkeeping violation. This wasn't, well, the campaign limit is 2,700 and inadvertently we contributed 2,800. This was a conspiracy to violate the prohibition on corporations giving uh, and a contribution hundreds of thousands of dollars in excessive legal limits to prevent a story from appearing to the public that may have changed the course of the election. So it's serious business. I think we need to wait until we get Mueller's full report to decide what does that mean. Now, I'm listening to you and all this going on in Washington. Washington is a different place. But I have to tell you, we heard the saying, it's the economy, stupid. Consumer confidence at an all-time high. You know, the, the stock market is at an all-time high. You know, something is going right with the administration. Everything's doing well. And, you know, and his approval ratings within his party are very high. Um, is there going to be a time when you want to get along with the president? Because, you know, we all want our president to succeed. And a lot of people are tired of hearing about this. Will you get along with the president soon? Or are you just going to keep going on with his investigation and just fighting back and forth? Because it seems like things are OK right now. Well, you know, in terms of the economy, things are OK for a great many people. But for literally half the country, yes, they're employed. But they are barely making enough to get by. Uh, they are just one auto payment away or one health problem away from failure. This is true of half the country. So. Yes, unemployment's low and the stock market that a great many Americans don't participate in is doing really well, but still half the country is on the brink of not making it. And that's, I think, the positive agenda that Democrats need to offer is address the economic needs of families that are barely able to put food on the table and pay their bills and pay their rent. And, you know, we're prepared to work with anyone to address those issues. Now, the president hasn't shown much interest in that. He was interested in a tax cut that benefited his wealthy donors and corporations. That's not where we're coming from. Uh, so, yes, if there's common ground, and I've reached out uh, to you the president out. on infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I think there's lots of good ground for bipartisan work on infrastructure and maybe other things. But as long as this president gets up in the morning and decides his job is to further divide the country and polarize the country, um, it's hard to find common ground with him. Well, you know, here in California, he's kind of extended an olive branch. We, you know our state, agricultural farmers. It's, you know, one of our biggest exports here. He's offering millions in aid to farmers. He, you know, and he just signed the deal with our, you know, negotiated the deal with Mexico. And that's, you know, we're the fifth largest export in Mexico. He's offering some relief. What do you think of this deal to help us out here? Well, the, you know, the thing of it is, first of all, I would strongly differ with you on his approach to California. His approach to California has been just downright hostile. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to well, with immigration and stuff but I'm well, talking about agriculture not just, not just immigration but mm -hmm. also on the environment trying to uh, effectively take away California's ability to protect its own citizens and the quality of their air but even in terms of agriculture yes he offered a bailout of farmers that he was hurting with his tariffs 
So that's no great favor. You ask the farmers in California, they're suffering because of the Trump tariffs. They don't want a handout from the federal government. But they like the deal. The Agriculture Department came out yesterday, head of California, said they like the deal with Mexico. They're proud to see the deal. Well, I think they're proud to see any relief from the tariffs. Uh, so, yes, yeah. uh, this is typical of the Trump administration. They create a problem, and then they say, aren't you happy that we're trying to fix the problem that we created? And that's what we're seeing with the tariffs. Now, in terms of the deal with Mexico and whether there will be any deal with Canada, it's still too early to tell whether the, any of that will come to fruition. And I think we ought to wait and see what the administration comes up with and then give it a fair hearing and make... Uh, make a decision about whether this is good for the American people or not. And ultimately, Congress would have to vote on that as well, sure. and that would be down the road. Uh, another big story this week is the death of John McCain, lying in state in Arizona today. It's going to be a service that I, I think you're going to be attending later this week. Um, what can we all learn from John McCain? Well, John McCain uh, put country over party, um, and he had a level of candor and straight speaking that was very refreshing, and that was true literally up until the very end of his life uh, and in the last statement he issued uh, on his own passing and um, I had a chance to get to know him to travel with him to go to national security conferences with him um, I just have great respect for him and I in fact I've you know had a conversation with him about why there aren't more John McCain's mm -hmm. in the Congress uh, I think he's a great model for all of us uh, and and I hope that his memory will inspire us to rise above party differences and, and put the country first. And why aren't there? I don't know, uh, but I'll tell you what his answer was, uh, because I asked him, why isn't there a single Republican member of the House that believes they have a constituency to be the John McCain of the House? And he said, well, if there isn't, they'll soon be calling you chairman. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. That would, of course, mean that the Democrats win back the House, yes. in which case you would be the chairman. Congressman, thank you for sharing your views. Thank Always you good very to see much. you. Thank we appreciate you. it, and, and we've invited our Republican members of Congress and hope that they'll join us soon here at.